Hi everyone, this is Dr. Sharif Al Gamal, and today I'm going to give you a video about structure analysis, and uh, more specifically, it will be about plastic analysis of structures. Uh, in this video, it will be video part number one. And at the beginning, I want to uh, discuss with you about what is the difference between elastic and plastic analysis. In the elastic analysis, the behavior of the structure should be within the elastic zone. If we'll go here to see a stress strain of like steel or in uh, many types of metals, you will find that at the beginning, the relationship between the stress and the strain is linear or elastic. Then you have a yield stress for the steel, and then it goes for the plastic or permanent deformations. So when we are talking about elastic analysis, we are here in this area of elasticity or in the elastic state. It means that the stresses are less than the F yield. The stresses are less than the yield strength of the steel uh, reinforcement or the steel structure. However, on the other hand, the plastic analysis, we are talking about the plastic zone here. It means the behavior of the structure beyond the elastic zone and the stresses will exceed the yield stress, uh, so it will be greater than F yield. This part is the elastic, and the other part here, it will be the plastic. When we are talking about plastic analysis, we are in the plastic zone or permanent deformation of the structure. The elastic analysis, uh, all or many of the structure analysis method like uh, slope deflection equations or moment distribution, stiffness method, etc. All of them are dealing with the analysis of the structure in the elastic region. So all of them are under the category of elastic analysis. And the design of a structure in the elastic analysis uh, is on the basis of no yield anywhere in the structure. For the plastic analysis, when we design a structure, we have to calculate the load causing complete collapse of the structure. Okay, so we calculate something called collapse load and collapse mechanism. And then we should make sure that this load exceeds the largest applied load on the structure. So we have to calculate first the collapse load and be sure that the applied load on the structure is less than this collapse load. So we'll be sure that we don't have a failure of our structure. Why we need this plastic analysis or the plastic design? Usually it is more widely used in steel structures where the structure has more deformations, okay? And generally it results in more economical structures. So when we design for plastic, plastic design usually it result in, results in more economical structure, less dimensions, cross-section dimension of the elements. So it will result at the end with more economical structures. What is the theory of plastic analysis, uh, plastic hinges, and so on? What we are going to conclude in this video and also in the coming videos, we will be talking about something called the theory of plastic analysis. What is this plastic analysis? And then we'll talk about something called the plastic hinge. Okay. Then what is the plastic collapse and collapse mechanisms of the structures? We'll talk, be talking about elastic and plastic moments. And at the end, we'll talk about something called shape factor, load factors, and collapse load. Let's start by the first part about theory of plastic analysis. What do we have here? The theory reveals that those parts of a structure that have been stressed to yield point cannot resist any additional stress. And this is logic. Here, if we see the stress strain, once you reach the yield strength, it cannot resist any additional load because the stresses are not increasing anymore and you have strains and deformations. So at any part of the structure, if it reaches the yield, okay, it cannot resist any additional stresses. And in this case, it will not be able to take any additional load at this point. Okay, so parts of the structure that have been stressed to yield points cannot resist any additional stresses. So what if I add extra load? Okay, if I add extra load, in this case, instead, any additional loads or stresses will be transferred to other parts of the structure. 
So you applied load and part of the structure at a cross section, it started reaching yield. So it cannot resist any additional stresses. So if you increase the load, what is going to happen? The stresses will be transferred or the loads will to be transferred to other parts of the structures where stresses are still below the yield stress. So it can continue to resist more additional loads and uh, stresses. Let's see here if I have a beam, like a simply supported beam, and if we applied any types of loading on this beam, and we'll take a section at the middle of the beam, let's say this will be the cross section, assuming it is a rectangular cross section, as we can see. Under this load, we'll have a stress distribution like this. The maximum stresses will be at the outers uh, of the uh, section. And at the beginning, these stresses are less than the yield strength. So we are still in the uh, elastic zone. How to get this, these stresses? We can get them from the famous equation, stress equals m over i times y. With, where is the i is the moment of inertia? Y is the distance from the neutral axis to the position where you want to calculate the stress. OK. If we add extra load, more loads, so the stresses here will start or will continue to increase until a point when at the outer parts of the uh, section, it will reach the yield strength. It will reach the FP yield. And maybe also at the bottom, it will reach FP yield if it is a symmetric system like in our case here. So what will be the stress in this case? We call it FP yield or the stress at yield equals M yield divided by I times y, okay? y here is the distance from the neutral axis to the top or to the bottom. And from this equation here, if we want to get the m yield or the yield strength, the yield the moment of the cross section equals f yield times i divided by y or f yield times s, where this s, we call, we call it the elastic modulus, which is equals i divided by y. Okay, so, until this point, we are still in the elastic range because we did not exceed the yield strength or the FP yield. What is going to happen if we added more loads? If we added more loads, so at the top here, at the top outer surface here of the uh, section, we already reached FP yield. So according to the plastic theory, it cannot resist any additional stresses. So if we increase the load, what is going to happen? These parts at lower parts, still, the stress is still less than the F yield. So what is going to happen? It will start to take more load and the stress will increase again and until it will, will reach the F yield, as you can see here, okay? So at the top, it's still the same F yield, but at the bottom here, it will start to take more load and until it will reach the F yield, then by adding extra load, this yield stresses will go deeper, closer to the neutral axis. Okay, so other layers here, will the stresses will increase to reach the F yield, and the stresses will go down, as you can see here. At the end, if we increase the load more and more, you will reach a case when all the top part of the uh, cross section will reach the F yield, the other part or the, uh, the bottom part also under the neutral axis, uh, axis uh, will reach also FP yield. So once we reach this case, we the, the, the section will not be able to take any additional load because you cannot increase the stresses more than this. This is the maximum that we can reach. And in this case, we call it fully plastic distribution. So this distribution here, we call it fully plastic distribution. And once it happened, a plastic hinge is set to have formed because no additional moment can be resisted at this section. Once I reach this one, if you increase the load, okay, the cross section will not be able to take any additional load or any additional stresses and a plastic hinge will form. How it will look like, okay, let's say, this is the middle part where you have the maximum moment. At the beginning, you have these black parts here. It means it reaches the yield. So at the beginning, the start will start from the top and the bottom, and then will propagate down and upward to the neutral axis until all the cross section will reach the F yield, 
once this happened, a plastic hinge will form here. So you will have a hinge at this position of maximum moment. Once we have a hinge here, what is going to happen? This structure will be unstable because you can see here, it is, has one hinge here and we have here one, two reactions, three reactions. So the number of equations in this case is greater than the number of unknowns. So it will be unstable. And by adding any load or any moment, what is going to happen? We will have a rotation at the plastic hinge and in this case, for this type of determinant structure, once a plastic hinge will form, we have a collapse of the determinant structure, okay? This is the meaning of a plastic hinge when the full cross-section will reach the full plastic distribution, as you can see here. So the plastic moment, M plastic, is the moment that produce full plasticity in all member cross-section and create a plastic hinge. The plastic moment is the moment that will result in a plastic hinge. However, the elastic moment, okay, we have taken this earlier. The elastic moment is the moment that will uh, result in the top and bottom or only top or bottom part of the, uh, the cross section will start to yield, okay? Once it reaches yield, we call it M elastic or M yield. However, if the cross section uh, reach it the case of fully plastic distribution, we call it the M plastic, and it will result in a formation of a plastic hinge at this cross section, okay? The ratio of the plastic moment to the elastic moment, M plastic divided by M elastic, it, called, it is called shape factor. So the shape factor or gamma equals M plastic, the plastic moment, divided by the elastic moment. Okay, this is the meaning of shape factor. Now let's see what is the plastic collapse of structures. And to understand this, we will take two examples here. The first one, a statically determined structure. And in this case, I will take a cantilever. For a cantilever, you have a free end here and you have a fixed support at the left side. So you have uh, this fixed support, you will have three reactions, Y, X, and also you have a moment and the number of equations also are free, so it is determinate. Okay, if we applied a uniform load here, this will be the shape of the bending moment. It is negative moment minus WL square over two. So the maximum moments are at the fixed support, okay? If you increase the load here, the moment will increase at this fixed end here, and the cross section at this point will, uh, the stresses will increase in the cross section until it will reach at one stage the plastic, the fully plastic distribution. And once we reach the fully plastic distribution, a plastic hinge will form at this fixed end. Once you have a plastic hinge here, the beam here will be no longer stable and will have a collapse of the beam. And this is, we call it collapse mechanism. So once a plastic hinge is formed in this determined structure, it requires only one plastic hinge. Once a plastic hinge will form, you will reach unstable structure and you will have a collapse mechanism. Okay, so the collapse mechanism, you will reach it when you have unstable or instability of the structure. Let's see and compare this one to or with indeterminate structure from the first degree. Okay, so the same previous example, okay, with cantilever, we added here, a ruler or a rocker support. So we add extra unknown. So the number of equations equal three and the number of unknowns are, uh, or is four in this case, you have one Y reaction here and at the fixed support, you still have X, Y and the moment. So the number of equations is less than the number of unknowns by one. So it is indeterminate from the first degree. So what is going to happen when we apply load? You will have a negative moment at the fixed support, and you will have some positive moment close to the middle of the cross section, okay? So the negative moment is greater than the positive moment. So the stresses at the fixed end will be greater than the stresses at the middle part of the beam. Okay, let's increase. If you increase the load more and more, so the first plastic hinge will form at the fixed end because the stresses will be higher, and it will reach the fully plastic uh, distribution, stress distribution. So in this case, you will have a plastic hinge will form at this fixed support. 
but do we reach the uh, plastic the collapse of the mechanism or the collapse of the structure still because now this one it change it from fixed support to become like a pin support and as you know here if this is a pin support and you have a roller support the structure now it is change it from indeterminate from the first degree to be determined structure so it will be pin support and roller support it is still stable so we did not reach the collapse mechanism or the collapse of the structure it means the structure can still continue to take more loads okay so let's apply more loads in this case if you apply more loads here at the plastic hinge here it cannot take any additional moment because the maximum moment that can be taken at the plastic hinge it is called m plastic or the plastic moment so what is going to happen this will not increase however at the close to the middle of the beam the moment was less than the m plastic so it means the cross section here can continue to take more load and more stresses until it will reach a plastic moment again and once we reach a plastic moment at this point another hinge will form here another plastic hinge will form at or close to the uh, middle part of the beam at the maximum positive moment and once i have another or a second uh, plastic hinge now the structure will be unstable because the number of equations will be greater than the number of unknown and once we reach it that it will be called collapse mechanism okay so is there is a relation between the number of plastic hinges and collapse mechanisms yes the structures has now become unstable and to know about the uh, number of plastic hinges and where is the position of plastic hinges let's see together the plastic hinge is more likely to occur at the following locations where you expect the plastic hinge to form at the maximum bending moment and this could be also at the intersection of two members if you have a vertical member horizontal member like a column and beam you expect to have also a plastic hinge at this point because we have highest bending moment at this connection and the hinge will form in the weakened member if you have the column is more stronger than the beam so it will form in the beam close to the, the intersection if the column is weaker it will be uh, form in the uh, weaker element which is the column in this case also at restrained ends if you have fixed supports at this point you expect to have a maximum negative moments and it is expected to have a plastic hinge and also in general under any point loads because under point loads you will expect maximum positive moment and also a, a plastic hinge may form there so in general we can say it's a plastic hinge will form at the maximum bending moment okay what is the number of plastic hinges the maximum number of plastic hinges it depends on the indeterminacy degree okay so the number of plastic hinges or n equals r plus one okay what is r r is the degree of indeterminacy it is indeterminate of first degree or second degree or third degree based on this one we can get the maximum number of plastic hinge which will form a collapse mechanism we may have a lower number than r plus one yes you may have something like that if you have a failure a local failure of part of the structure like in a case of a beam in a frame structure or a cantilever yes you may have less than the uh, r plus one but the maximum you cannot go more than r plus one the maximum number of plastic hinge that will form a collapse mechanism equals r plus one okay let's uh, see together here some examples if you have an example like this one it is a simply supported beam with pin support and a ruler support so it is a determined structure uh, r equals zero so if we apply the equation n or number of plastic hinges equals r plus one so it will be zero plus one equals one so it means if i have only one plastic hinge form is in this beam it will result in the collapse mechanism and where is this expected it will be expected at the middle or close to the middle based on the type of loads that we have at the position of maximum uh, positive moment once you have a plastic hinge here the structure will be unstable and you have a collapse mechanism if we have this structure here you have a fixed support and then you have a ruler support so three equations three uh, reactions here one reaction here so the r equals one it is indeterminate from the first degree 
So the total number of plastic hinge n equals r plus one, one plus one equals two. It means if I have two plastic hinge forms here, I will have a collapse mechanism. We expect that the first one will be at the fixed support. Then after that, we another plastic hinge will form close to the middle uh, span or the middle of the span. Once we have two plastic hinges, the structure will be no longer stable. And in this case, we can say it reached the collapse mechanism. If we have a frame like this one supported in two pin supports, for the pin support, you know that you have two reactions, X and Y, X and Y. So the number of reactions or unknowns is four. And the number of equations is still three. So the, it is indetermined from the first degree by applying this equation here. So the maximum number of plastic hinge will be one plus one. The R plus one equals two. So I need a maximum of two plastic hinges to have a collapse mechanism in this case. And OK, it could be this shape here. You, you have a sway mechanism. This will come later in a coming video about the collapse mechanisms of frames. And one of them is the sway mechanism. So we have one, two plastic hinges. Once they are there, the structure will be unstable, and we have a collapse mechanism. If we have a frame with two fixed supports, so at the fixed support, I will have three unknowns, another three unknowns. And you still have three equations, so it is indetermined from the third degree. If it is indetermined from the third degree, it means n equals three plus one, so it will be four plastic hinges. So the maximum number of plastic hinges that will form a collapse mechanism will, will be four, and in this case, it could be like a sway mechanism at the fixed support, at the fixed support, and also at the connection between beam and column and the beam and column here. Okay, so this is the maximum number, but later on you will see in a coming video, you may have a collapse mechanism of the frame for a beam mechanism, and if you have a beam mechanism, you may need only three plastic hinges to form a collapse of the beam. It means there's a local failure of uh, like one element or part of the structure. Thank you for watching. This is the end of uh, this video, which is video number one, or part one. In the coming videos, I'm going to talk about elastic and plastic moments calculations, shape factor calculations, load factor calculations, and also what are different collapse mechanisms and collapse load of structures. Thank you for watching and looking forward to see you in a coming video and goodbye.